Hi, uh, my name is Sabya Sachi Sengupta. I work for Nuage Networks, which is a division of uh, Nokia. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how we got uh, very good performance with, uh, in our SD-WAN gateway using DPDK and KNI. And I wanted to channelize our discussion into um, several small uh, sections in our talk. Um, we will start with an introduction of the ecosystem, SD-WAN ecosystem itself. Then we'll talk about how we went about uh, solving the problem. And we'll uh, take a reasonably deep dive into our uh, solution architecture. And finally, we talk about the big picture and finally our results. So without uh, wasting too much time, I'll get into the slides. Um, so we have the SD-WAN ecosystem, which is like uh, we have a set of um, enterprise branches that want to talk to the cloud, which could be their, uh, the private cloud or it could be a hybrid cloud where uh, the actual data center is. And each branch tries to talk uh, to the cloud uh, with uh, x86-based commodity of the shelf hardware. Um, which we call the SD-WAN gateway. So this SD-WAN gateway is the center of our architecture. In pictorially, this can uh, look like this at a very high level. So if you see that um, there is this um, SD-WAN gateway, which uh, has uh, one or more uplinks, which face the uh, WAN side. And then on the LAN side, you have the uplinks could be up to 10 gig, uh, 10 gig Ethernet. And then on the LAN side, you will have um, up to eight or more um, uh, access links, which are one gig Ethernet. And then of interest for the data path point of view, you will have uh, a virtual switch, which is often implemented by vSwitchD, uh, open vSwitch. And uh, there are, of course, a number of kernel modules, as we know that the fast path of open vSwitch is um, traditionally inside kernel. Uh, implemented by Open vSwitch kernel module, and then the rest of IP stack. Um, on the cloud uh, data center side, uh, you will have an open flow controller that uh, does a zero touch provisioning of the gateways, and uh, also for provisioning the data path itself. Then you have the orchestrator, which is open stack based, or it could be a private one, which is developed by each vendor. Then you have a border gateway, which is also another uh, entity SD -WAN, in the SD-WAN ecosystem, which is also a part of our target architecture. So what are the requirements that, uh, driving, that drives off the performance? Like usually there is uh, expectation that this is uh, based off broadband, uh, uh, broadband which uh, can be uh, which can be up to 10 gig Ethernet. And then the requirement is to have voice as well as different kinds of traffic. Um, the, uh, the desire is to have as much throughput as possible through this, because we are um, using this in lieu of uh, some, something like an MPLS over um, MPLS uh, kind of solution. So what are the limitations? The limitations on the kernel side, uh, kernel-based forwarding will be again that uh, 4K page size limitation. So you can only have certain number of packets. And what will happen is whenever the, mm, they, uh, they cross the page boundary, you will incur a TLB miss. And then uh, there will be page faults, which has to be handled. Uh, when you are talking about uh, a higher amount of throughput, this does play a telling effect on your performance. So, uh, then there is no dedicated resource management uh, with kernel-based forwarding. So mm, that, that is, again, an issue. Like if you want uh, very high throughput, it can never support more than a few gigs, uh, per, uh, few, few gigs uh, per second. Then the network stack itself, uh, then uh, you, uh, as the packets arrive, you will have to uh, uh, incur as the packets go into the slow path, there will be a kernel to user space uh, copy. Again, like these are some bottlenecks. So why DPDK? So DPDK provides us with our uh, with the two meg uh, to one gig page size that we all know, huge page size. So you can in include more packets in into the page, lesser number of fa page faults. So all these are good things. 
so what is unique about SD-WAN? So the, uh, the unique about SD-WAN is that this is happening over the internet. So you need to have inbuilt support for IPsec. We need to have uh, very good support for quality of service. All these are uh, the challenges that we set out to solve. So let's take a look at the overview of the solution. So here, uh, as we all know, that Open vSwitch has been uh, being, uh, is being enhanced uh, over the last few years that uh, it has very good support for DPDK nowadays. However, we are looking at the last, uh, the, 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 la the latest uh, long time support uh, release, the LTS version, which is 2.5, and uh, even 2.6 doesn't have very good uh, capabilities. So we will talk about that in a minute. But again, we could build uh, OBS DPDK based solution, which means that you could create a bridge using uh, the data path type net NetDev and then add a DPDK port and then have a uh, lot of functionality baked into that. However, we have spoken about the need for having a very robust system because this is SD WAN where uh, the data path itself is uh, to be managed at, uh, with zero touch provisioning, so there is no room for any crashes. You are trying to replace the kernel forwarding. So uh, in case there is a bug somewhere or there is some issue in the slow path, you cannot bring down the entire gateway because uh, the only option at that time would be to RMA the box. That's not desirable. So what we, uh, and, and in addition, you also have to have certain features like contract, like IP tables uh, for implementing firewalls and these kind of things. Natting. So these features have been traditionally been implemented inside the kernel. So how to get the best of both worlds? So what we did was we tried out with KNI, and this proved to be very good because uh, with KNI, uh, it is kind of a conduit between uh, to send the packets from a DPDK-based application into the kernel because we need the kernel as our solution is based on OpenV switch, uh, the flow table for switching packets resides inside the kernel, and we want to send, somehow send the packets into kernel because we also want to implement things like IP table and contract. So uh, KNI serves as the conduit. Uh, what it provides us is a set of uh, slave uh, KNI queues, and you could uh, actually uh, model them in such a way that uh, you could head one uh, uplink port with a, and tie them up with a number of KNI queues, and then uh, use bonding so that the applications uh, applications see this as a uplink, the bond device as the uplink. So that's how we did it. The upside is with this architecture, you would be able, uh, able to use a lot of functionality that the kernel provides. However, we will still incur that page cop uh, that uh, copy between the, uh, when we send the packet from the user space. But our experimental results show that uh, it was fairly stable when we tuned it. So let's look at how we did it. So this is kind of a little busy slide, but I will try to walk through uh, this uh, uh, quickly. So on the right-hand side of the rectangle, you will see two cylinders. These cylinders uh, mimic the pipeline that we built. So in this particular diagram, you will see two threads and one for incoming and one for outgoing. So as a packet arrives into the, uh, into the SD-WAN gateway, it will, be first, uh, it will be first defragged, and then it will be sent to uh, the IPsec quart engine, which is, again, a DPDK, uh, DPDK construct, a DPDK crypto dev uh, emulation. So you can use that. And then the packet is fed. Uh, so look at the bubbles three and four in black. So that will go into the, K, uh, into the KNI box, which are nothing but the uh, uh, modeling of the KNI queues. So with these KNI queues, it will get into the DPDK library and from there into the kernel, and it will make its way into the Open vSwitch kernel model. So into the Open vSwitch kernel model, you'll see there is a uh, red rectangle there, and that's the flow table we are talking about. So the flow table is the, is the key. So that decides whether based on the first packet or not, if it is the first packet, the, uh, the bubble with eight, black, black eight, will go up into the Open vSwitch flow table. There it will uh, consult the Open vSwitch uh, open flow rules and install it into the red uh, kernel flow table. And subsequently, the packets will not go to the user space and it will actually uh, take its course. So it can either come back uh, to be routed out of the uh, another 
uplink port or it can go through the uh, access ports. So how does the software look like? So do we do everything afresh? No, we don't. So what we did is we leveraged a lot of work that was done in upstream Open vSwitch. And what we, do, what we did was we built our solution on top of Open vSwitch libraries. So if you look at this diagram, you will see that a number of uh, Open v, lib Open vSwitch libraries on which we built our own libraries and then we created our own app. So we leverage a lot of things that is done in the upstream and then we build our own solution. So uh, in the threading model, uh, this is a very, there can be many, uh, uh, many uh, approaches, but this is one of the models that we have used. So as the packet comes in, so it's a run to, run to completion model. So you will have uh, the main thread, which uh, talks to the open v switch and downloads the IPsec policies into, into the application, and then it applies it, uh, and, and then it applies the policy on the uh, packets that arrive. And then finally, those three red cylinders are the KNI queues that will go right directly into the DPDK bond device. So how it all fits together, if you see this, uh, in the gateway, you have the open v switch, uh, v switch D application, and just like the, in the kernel way, it will uh, send the IPsec policies into kernel uh, through the XFRM policies. We create a uh, multi, uh, we create a multicast between the kernel and the DPDK application, so that every message that is sent to the kernel will also be mimicked into the DPDK application. So we didn't have to modify Open vSwitch for that. So then we got all the policies into the application, and then we built our own flow tables, and that's how it works. So let's look at the big picture. So what is, what is SD-WAN here? So in SD-WAN, again, we spoke at the beginning of the presentation that there will be a, uh, there, uh, there is a strong need for doing all this on the fly. So dynamism and automation in SD-WAN environment is the key. So how we do that? Uh, we have used uh, the DPDK's blacklisting and whitelisting uh, abilities, and then we have modified DPDK to do the PCI scan on the fly. So all we need to do is to turn on network acceleration on the port, and then we can actually we can think about monetizing it. So look at look, look at how how it can be done. So we have let's say we create uh, three profiles here. So the profiles can be something like a small, medium, and large. So day-to-day -day usage, you don't need to allocate uh, that many res uh, CPU resources for DPDK usage. So you will have one PMD per uplink, and then one KNI per uplink, and one KNI slave per uplink to send the packets uh, to and fro the kernel, and this works very well. Then you look at the accelerated, uh, the medium profile, where you give more KNI. So we have seen that the performance improves if we increase the number of KNIs. But then, if uh, on a real uh, production network, when there are a lot of outgoing and incoming traffic, we increase the number of PMDs. So, and we increase the number of KNIs to four. And this gave us up to seven uh, GBPS uh, half duplex traffic. So look at this slide, and here is what it looks like. Uh, a, a number of branches which has, uh, which has DPDK enabled. And then at the center, you have the border router. If you remember in the first slide when we spoke about the border router, which is like, a, uh, which is like the central router between the uh, central gateway between the cloud and the branch. So here, it stitches together different underlays, and then it, uh, it terminates and then reinitiates new IPsec connections. So all that is done using DPDK and KNI. So our uh, goal was to, uh, as, as I said, like initially, uh, our goal was to uh, productize this, and the time to market was crucial. When we had started out this project, we had uh, uh, our, our gateway, which was about, uh, uh, which was which had uh, 16 gigs of RAM and up to 16 uh, 16 cores, uh, 16 logical cores. Uh, it could only de uh, deliver two, uh, two GBPS of half duplex traffic with IPsec. And that uh, on, on a 10 GBPS one link, that was definitely not acceptable. With this model, we are able to go up to uh, seven GBPS of uh, uh, throughput, which is great. This is again, as I said, the 
uh, whole discussion is about uh, how, how we can improve performance, and this is a continuous work. So we can actually improve it even further by bringing all the access side ports into the DPDK application. However, this requires work in the upstream OVS as well as on ourselves to implement things like contract, IP tables, and uh, stuff like that. So once that is done, we would be able to get all the way to, uh, to uh, a freeway limit. And finally, I want to sign off with uh, credits for my team. We have worked tirelessly for the last one year, one and a half years, to get this done. I want to especially call out the names of uh, Paul, Limin, Ravi, John. Uh, they were the principal developers. And uh, then there were some text folks. And then uh, Prasad and Raymond, they uh, did all the program management and product management. That's about it. Thanks. Questions? <coughs> Question from Frank over here. Hello. Um, have you looked at uh, Vieta your user as an exception pass instead of KNI? Because KNI is a no go for to be uh, upstream in kernel, while uh, vhostnet is already there. So, to my question, have you evaluated the Vieta your user exceptional pass? I, I really would not follow. Can you? So, instead of KNI? Yeah. Why didn't you use Vietaio user as an exceptional pass? I'm looking at the uh, how, you, how to of uh, DPDK uh, page. So this is a way to have this kind of communication to replace KNI with uh, Vietaio user. So my question is, have you evaluated Vietaio user? And why did you choose no, KNI? Didn't, we didn't try other alternatives. This worked out. Uh, is that why we used KNI? Is that the question? Yeah, because KNI is, uh, is no go. Upstream, so it's fine because you 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 don't live upstream. But uh, I was just wondering. Uh, some people have put effort in Vietaio user to be to 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 replace KNI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, this is a work in the rational. I, I didn't. We didn't find any. Uh, we we didn't find. Um, yeah, we did a lot of tuning of the KNIs itself. Uh, as we cranked up, as we tried to crank up uh, more than seven Gbps, uh, the kernel. Uh, does not scale well until until you go to 7.3. So uh, yeah, KNI do has its own limitations, but this works uh, because we are trying to productize it, and it also uh, it's a question of time to market. So that's why we use the KNIs. It it uh, we couldn't have used the OpenV switch as is. Again, uh, maybe I'm not understanding the question. We can take it offline if you like. Yeah, yeah we're uh, running into the break now. We. Uh